Could I have the second group up here, please? Very ladida kitchen. We move on to the, the <laughs> probably the outer ring road. Uh, the story is titled Tempo Traveler, and the three uh, writers who've written them is Nurat, uh, Mary Rose, and uh, Meghna. Uh, Ruh was waiting for her company's van when it began to rain. Oh God, why? muttered she. When she woke up, it was hot, but soon the clouds came racing from all directions and hit the morning sun. A tempo stopped before her. Get in quick, madam. It was Venkatesh, the conductor, who helped her with her laptop bag. Hello, Venkatesh. Hello, Shiva, said Drew while getting in the tempo. Does it usually rain like this here? No, ma'am. It's just a drizzle. We'll stop soon, said Shiva, glancing through the rear view mirror. Ruth was a software developer and had begun working at the IT company just three months ago. She had come from a town, Shopian, in Kashmir, and getting this job was a huge moment in her life. Every morning, she boarded the tempo traveler provided by her company and was mostly accompanied by her seniors. So she conversed with them, but a little. But with Shiva and Vankatesh, the scene was different. She could connect with them. Like Ruh, they too had come from small towns only to earn for their families. She too had financial problems back home and needed this job like anything. Earlier, there were no money issues, but after she lost her father, the issues surfaced. Though her mother managed to scrape through, but Ruh knew they needed more. The morning drive always started with Shiva's muttering or some prayer. Then he would switch on his phone and get darshan of his favorite god. Shiva, do you always pray like this? Asked Ruh one day, Madam, at her home, no work is started without a puja. My mother always insisted on this, he had said. Seeing he has finished his prayer, she asked, Did you arrange the money? Shiva shrugged his shoulders, not a penny. Ruh knew he needed money as one of his sisters was to get married this year only. I have talked with some people. Next, next month, I may be able to help, said Ruh. Ramzan was coming, so Ru thought that she might ask her family and friends back in her hometown for financial help for Shiva. That was the time of the year when Muslims donated huge amounts of money, thinking it will lessen their sins and make the path to the heaven easier. She was the first person to get in the temple, so she always got a chance to talk to them. After 10 minutes journey, more and more employees joined. It was their evening journeys where most of the seniors were in cheerful mood and cracked jokes. But the morning ride was quiet, disturbed occasionally by a hello or a hi or some cough. Soon they reached the office and rain had stopped long back. Tearing the clouds apart, out came the scorching sun. Ah, it's going to be a hot day, thought Guru, getting off the tempo. Shiva was tired of driving and he needed to take a leak. He signaled to Venkatesh. Who knew if that bastard conductor would allow him to stop for a few minutes? Once they dropped off their morning passengers at the software company, Venkatesh ran a tight schedule, stuffing as many paying passengers as they could. Shiva adjusted the chunky silver earring on his left lobe. Even now, he remembered his father's fury when he had returned home to Davangere for Ugadi. Big city man, eh? His father had shouted. Piercings are for women. Why don't you just put one in the other ear, too, and people won't know what you are? But the fury had disappeared soon. Every argument, every discussion always turned to money. Would they have enough for Savitri's wedding? Shiva knew his sister's future hinged on the money he sent home. He talked about it often to Venkatesh. But Shiva was stunned when that young woman on the office pickup had asked him about his sister. He didn't expect a passenger should care about his troubles. His midday passengers were a different lot, crude and demanding. Shiva was not surprised to hear a protest as he exited the TT to relieve himself. Why are we stopping? I'm not paying for you to waste my time here. The barrel-chested old man had a surprisingly shrill voice. They had picked him up nearly 20 minutes before, and he hadn't stopped belching during the ride. Shiva eased the TT back onto the main road. He picked up speed, swaying between lanes. An auto rickshaw turned onto the road. When he was close, Shiva slammed his open palm onto the horn. Bloody autos always cut him off. Shiva crouched as he passed. He was still hunting for the driver who had clipped Reka from behind. His wife's foot had passed through the wheel well and emerged torn and twisted on the other side. 
the driver had sped off. His wife now spent most of her time at home. Hey, stop on that side, Venkatesh instructed. That ugly woman said there would be a bunch needing a ride starting today. Shiva signaled. A black car was in the next lane. The driver was looking at her mobile. Shiva honked three times. She did not respond. And this is why women shouldn't be on the roads. Shiva raised his hand to strike the horn again. Nothing happened. He looked down at the steering wheel and applied greater pressure. No sound. Use the horn, man. What's wrong with you? Venkatesh was shouting. Something's wrong. I think it's stuck. In the web of traffic, there was no space to change lanes. Didn't I tell you to have them check it at the station last week? Venkatesh was now livid. Shiva felt powerless without the horn. Suddenly, he saw an opening and his chance to teach the woman a lesson. He swerved, scraping the entire length of her car. Venkatesh shouted his approval. Before she could react, he was ahead of her, swinging into her lane and neatly coming to a stop at the waiting crowd. Venkatesh threw open the door as the passengers swarmed. Shiva slumped and rested his forehead on the steering wheel. Garamma was fed up of working at the garment factory. She and another worker, Ambika, had been waiting at the bus stop for more than 20 minutes, but there were no buses in sight. I've had enough. My next door neighbor works at that new mall. I'm going to ask her to find me a job there, she said. But don't you have to know English? Ambika asked. Her chin went up. So what? I will learn. Ah, but will you also wear the pant shirt uniform? Ambika teased. Hmm, that we'll see. You know, my daughter has also started demanding a pant shirt. I gave her one whack. Girls should dress like girls, no? She's not a child anymore. Her friend laughed. You're just 30 years old, but you act like my grandmother. You have to be careful, Ambika. That supervisor, have you seen the way he stares? Come, madam, I'll drop you to the bus stand. Do I look like a fool? Ambika giggled. She looked at her watch. It's nearly 8 o'clock. I wonder what's taking my husband so long. Gaurama sighed. Che, I should have started making dinner by this time. Now by the time I reach home, that cranky old woman will be telling all the neighbours, see how my daughter-in-law is starving me to death. Three shiny red Volvo buses came by, sliding smoothly to a stop. Why don't you take a Volvo today? Ambika asked. Are you mad? For 120 rupees, I can go to Mysore. Okay, okay. Anyway, Ravi's here. I'm leaving. See you tomorrow. She hurried away. Several people left in the air-conditioned buses. Finally, a TT arrived. The conductor poked his head out and yelled, Kyarpuram, bani bani, kyarpuram. Walgade hogi. The driver shouted at the passengers to go inside. As Gaurama entered, he gave her a long, leisurely look up and down. She pulled her pallu around her shoulders and hurried inside. In the dim green light, she made out an empty window seat and collapsed onto it in relief. Fatigue and the rhythmic motion of the vehicle soon lulled her to sleep. She awoke with a start. How long had she been asleep? She looked outside and frowned. Which road was this? And the TT was almost empty. A young man seemed to be arguing with the conductor. But you said you would go to Kyarpuram, the man insisted. We can't, sir. There's a problem with the vehicle. We have to take it to the garage. The vehicle stopped and he got off, grumbling. It took a full minute for Gaurama to process what she had heard. She rushed to the front. Stop. I need to get down. Please sit down. We will take you home safely. Don't worry. The conductor stood up and stretched. He leaned across her and drew the curtain closed. The driver sent him a slow smile. His earring glittered briefly as they passed beneath a lone streetlight. And then there was just darkness.